If you're a designer, you know this moment. A new project, an empty Figma file, the pressure to create something brilliant from nothing. You scroll, you search, but nothing feels right. I've been there so many times until I discovered this. I'm Isabella Snyder, I'm a UX UI designer. So today I decided to share an ideation process which I used myself, which helped me find a project for $2,000. So now I'm going to share like some details about the project if you're not interested in them then please feel free to skip them but for those who's interested so i quit my job in russia and decided to change everything about my life and move to vietnam to live on my own and try working as a freelance designer i was planning to look for the projects to uh set up my upwork account to find clients but like a couple of weeks ago my lead designer from the previous work from russia he texted me and he offered me a project from like his friend he told me that his friend he is looking for a designer so we texted each other and uh, this guy told me the details of the project so the thing was that at my previous job i worked as a web designer and i never had an, any experience with mobile apps this freelance project was all about like mobile it was kind of a problem because the client felt uncertain about me so he decided to give me a test task to like check my abilities to check my skills so the result of the test task had to be two high fidelity screens with all the requirements by the client included and also it had to be under a certain style the task seemed very clear but it was only until i opened figma and saw this phase number one understanding the problem a blank figma page can be terrifying making you rush to start designing. But please don't do that unless you want to waste your time. The first thing you need to do is ask questions. Ideally, you should conduct user research, but first check with the client if they already done any research. Like, do they have a user persona or a customer journey map? Here's a tip I wish I knew when I was a younger designer. Don't be afraid to ask questions. The more you know, the better your design decisions will be. Ask as many questions as needed to absorb all the details. Here are the questions which I asked my client. I asked the questions about the project. What is the main problem we are solving? What are the business objectives? I asked questions about the users. Who are our users? Like what is their age, gender, location, job, level of income, hobbies, lifestyle, etc. I also asked questions about competitors and similar services. Like what are the direct competitors? what are the indirect ones phase number two creating user personas once you have more information about the users start creating user personas organize all the details into structured portraits like let's imagine we're creating a user persona for an app with cafes for digital nomads so an example persona would look something like this his name would be james carter age 29 non-binary location constantly traveling currently in bali job freelance UX designer and income 60,000 per year. Hobbies would be surfing, photography, exploring coffee culture. A possible lifestyle would be starts the day by checking Slack and emails, works four to six hours daily from different locations, prefers cafes with stable Wi-Fi and a calm atmosphere, often struggles to find quiet places and busy tourist areas. By the way, if you have difficulties with writing personas, you can always ask ChatGPT to enrich the personas with more details. Here is a sample query. You're an amazing UX researcher, you know everything about users and how to create a product that people will recognize, love, and share. Help me refine the user personas for an app. And then you briefly describe main ideas of the app. Next, define jobs to be done based on the user personas where you can clearly see their needs problems and preferences start defining jobs to be done this framework helps you translate user needs into actionable features i use this template when i want to describe a situation I want to describe the motivation so I can describe an expected outcome. For example, if I was creating an app related to cafes for digital nomads, a job to be done of a potential user would look something like this. When I'm traveling to a city, I want to quickly find a quiet cafe with strong Wi-Fi so I can work productively without wasting time searching for a good spot. Basically, this method ensures that every feature in your design is solving a real user need. Again, ask ChatGPT if you you need more 
help. Phase number four, researching similar services. Look at similar products, analyze how they solve UX problems, and take notes. I like to set a limit of closely researching two, three services. I install the app or visit the website or just use mobbing so where I can take a screenshot of every step of the user flow and organize them in Figma. I connect the steps with arrows and highlight important insights. Phase number five, creating a user flow. Now that you understand the users and their experiences with similar services, it is time to create your own user flow. This step is crucial because it helps you break down complex information into smaller pieces. Start with a FigGem file or use a Figma template to map out the main screens and key interactions. Phase six, drawing wireframes. For this step, I just love using Figma community files. So simply you need to transform your user flow into low fidelity wireframes. So just try to keep it simple and don't focus on details yet. Phase seven, identifying the tone of voice. Before jumping into UI research, I highly recommend identifying the tone of voice of the app. This is going to be the personality of the future service. Use your knowledge from user research, personas, business goals, and client preferences to define the brand's character. So you should ask yourself, is it formal or casual, serious or playful, respectful or irreverent, matter of fact or enthusiastic? Answering these questions will help you define a set of keywords. These keywords will be core traits of your future service and also they will guide the visual language and branding decisions. Phase 8. Begin researching UI ideas. My favorite website for UI inspiration is Arena. It has everything from trendy designs to niche styles. However, its search function isn't as intuitive as Pinterest or Dribbble. So to help you out, I've added some direct links to my favorite UI boards in the description. Phase 9. Designing the UI. Now unleash your creativity. All the research and structure in place, you can confidently explore different UI styles, experiment with ideas, and create a thoughtful design. Final step, present your work. You really need to present your ideas. A solid presentation is like 80% of success. It helps you review all information and catch inconsistencies. Show the client how your ideas developed step by step. Make your work look structured and well thought out. Even if your design has minor flaws, a well-organized presentation can highlight your process and make your work more convincing. Basically, following these steps helped me a lot because from the beginning, I knew what I was about to do. I never had the fear of running out of ideas or feeling stuck because I was reducing the uncertainty by researching users, understanding their needs, and by exploring various UX and UI ideas. Overall, these small steps smoothly led me to a great result. The client was amazed by the amount of work. He said that the task was completed excellently. So after that, we agreed on further collaboration. Here are some stats. I spent almost 20 hours hours on the whole project, but what I gained is an increased confidence and a satisfied client who is willing to continue working with me. So dear designers, what are your thoughts on this ideation process? Please share your opinion in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. And that's it for today. See you soon.